verses 6 to 10. He showed himself to them by an instance of his power, and this perfected the discovery, v6 he ordered them to cast the net on the right side of the ship, the contrary side to what they had been casting it on, and then they, who were going home empty-handed, were enriched with a great draft of fishes. Here we have, the orders Christ gave them, and the promise annexed to those orders, cast the net there in such a place, and you shall find. He from whom nothing is hid, no, not the inhabitants under the waters, Job 26 5, knew on what side of the ship the shoal of fishes was, and to that side he directs them. Note, divine providence extends itself to things most minute and contingent, and they are happy that know how to take hints thence in the conduct of their affairs, and acknowledge it in all their ways. Their obedience of these orders, and the good success of it. As yet they knew not that it was Jesus, however, they were willing to be advised by anybody, and did not bid this supposed stranger mind his own business and not meddle with theirs, but took his counsel, in being thus observant of strangers, they were obedient to their master unawares. And it sped wonderfully well, now they had a draft that paid them for all their pains. Note, those that are humble, diligent, and patient, though their labors may be crossed, shall be crowned, they sometimes live to see their affairs take a happy turn, after many struggles and fruitless attempts. There is nothing lost by observing Christ's orders. Those are likely to speed well that follow the rule of the word, the guidances of the spirit, and the intimations of providence, for this is casting the net on the right side of the ship. Now the draft of fishes may be considered as a miracle in itself, and so it was designed to prove that Jesus Christ was raised in power, though sown in weakness, and that all things were put under his feet, the fishes of the sea not accepted. Christ manifests himself to his people by doing that for them which none else can do, and things which they looked not for. As a mercy to them, for the seasonable and abundant supply of their necessities. When their ingenuity and industry failed them, the power of Christ came in opportunely for their relief, for he would take care that those who had left all for him should not want any good thing. When we are most at a loss, Jehovah Jireh, as the memorial of a former mercy, with which Christ had formerly recompensed Peter for the loan of his boat, L.U. 5 4, etc., this miracle nearly resembled that, and could not but put Peter in mind of it, which helped him to improve this, for both that and this affected him much, as meeting him in his own element, in his own employment. Latter favors are designed to bring to mind former favors, that eaten bread may not be forgotten. As a mystery, and very significant of that work to which Christ was now with an enlarged commission sending them forth. The prophets had been fishing for souls, and caught nothing, or very little, but the apostles, who let down the net at Christ's word, had wonderful success. Many were the children of the desolate, Galen 4.27. They themselves, in pursuance of their former mission, when they were first made fishers of men, had had small success in comparison with what they should now have. When, soon after this, three thousand were converted in one day, then the net was cast on the right side of the ship. It is an encouragement to Christ's ministers to continue their diligence in their work. One happy draft, at length, may be sufficient to repay many years of toil at the gospel net. How the disciples received this discovery which Christ made of himself, v7, 8, where we find that John was the most intelligent and quick-sighted disciple. He whom Jesus loved was the first that said, It is the Lord. For those whom Christ loves he will in a special manner manifest himself to, his secret is with his favorites. John had adhered more closely to his master in his sufferings than any of them, and therefore he has a clearer eye and a more discerning judgment than any of them, in recompense for his constancy. When John was himself aware that it was the Lord, he communicated his knowledge to those with him, for this dispensation of the Spirit is given to every one to profit with all. Those that know Christ themselves should endeavor to bring others acquainted with him, we need not engross him, there is enough in him for us all. John tells Peter particularly his thoughts, that it was the Lord, knowing he would be glad to see him above any of them. Though Peter had denied his master, yet, having repented, and being taken into the communion of the disciples again, they were as free and familiar with him as ever. 
that Peter was the most zealous and warm-hearted disciple, for as soon as he heard it was the Lord, for which he took John's word, the ship could not hold him, nor could he stay till the bringing of it to shore, but into the sea he throws himself presently, that he might come first to Christ. He showed his respect to Christ by girding his fisher's coat about him that he might appear before his master in the best clothes he had, and to rudely rush into his presence, stripped as he was to his waistcoat and drawers, because the work he was about was toilsome, and he was resolved to take pains in it. Perhaps the fisher's coat was made of leather, or oil cloth, and would keep out wet, and he girded to him that he might make the best of his way through the water to Christ, as he used to do after his nets, when he was intent upon his fishing. He showed the strength of his affection to Christ, and his earnest desire to be with him, by casting himself into the sea, and either wading or swimming to shore, to come to him. When he walked upon the water to Christ, Mt 14 28, 29, it was said, he came down out of the ship deliberately, but here it is said, he cast himself into the sea with precipitation, sink or swim, he would show his good will and aim to be with Jesus. If Christ suffer me, thinks he, to drown, and come short of him, it is but what I deserve for denying him. Peter had had much forgiven, and made it appear he loved much by his willingness to run hazards, and undergo hardships, to come to him. Those that have been with Jesus will be willing to swim through a stormy sea, a sea of blood, to come to him. And it is a laudable contention amongst Christ's disciples to strive who shall be first with him. That the rest of the disciples were careful and honest-hearted. Though they were not in such a transport of zeal as to throw themselves into the sea, like Peter, yet they hastened in the boat to the shore, and made the best of their way, v8 the other disciples, and John with them, who had first discovered that it was Christ, came slowly, yet they came to Christ. Now here we may observe, how variously God dispenses his gifts. Some excel, as Peter and John, are very eminent in gifts and graces, and are thereby distinguished from their brethren, others are but ordinary disciples, that mind their duty, and are faithful to him, but do nothing to make themselves remarkable, and yet both the one and the other, the eminent and the obscure, shall sit down together with Christ in glory, nay, and perhaps the last shall be first. Of those that do excel, some, like John, are eminently contemplative, have great gifts of knowledge, and serve the church with them, others, like Peter, are eminently active and courageous, are strong, and do exploits, and are thus very serviceable to their generation. Some are useful as the church's eyes, others as the church's hands, and all for the good of the body. What a great deal of difference there may be between some good people and others in the way of their honoring Christ, and yet both accepted of him. Some serve Christ more in acts of devotion, and extraordinary expressions of a religious zeal, and they do well, to the Lord they do it. Peter ought not to be censured for casting himself into the sea, but commended for his zeal and the strength of his affection, and so must those be who, in love to Christ, quit the world, with Mary, to sit at his feet. But others serve Christ more in the affairs of the world. They continue in that ship, drag the net, and bring the fish to shore, as the other disciples here, and such ought not to be censured as worldly, for they, in their place, are as truly serving Christ as the other, even in serving tables. If all the disciples had done as Peter did, what had become of their fish and their nets? And yet if Peter had done as they did we had wanted this instance of holy zeal. Christ was well pleased with both, and so must we be. That there are several ways of bringing Christ's disciples to shore to him from off the sea of this world. Some are brought to him by a violent death, as the martyrs, who threw themselves into the sea, in their zeal for Christ, others are brought to him by a natural death, dragging the net, which is less terrible, but both meet at length on the safe and quiet shore with Christ. What entertainment the Lord Jesus gave them when they came ashore! He had provision ready for them. When they came to land, wet and cold, weary and hungry, they found a good fire there to warm them and dry them, and fish and bread, competent provision for a good meal. We need not be curious in inquiring whence this fire, and fish, and bread, came, any more than whence the meat came which the ravens brought to Elijah. 
he that could multiply the loaves and fishes that were could make new ones if he pleased, or turn stones into bread, or send his angels to fetch it, where he knew it was to be had. It is uncertain whether this provision was made ready in the open air, or in some fisher's cabin or hut upon the shore, but here was nothing stately or delicate. We should be content with mean things, for Christ was. We may be comforted in this instance of Christ's care of his disciples, he has wherewith to supply all our wants, and knows what things we have need of. He kindly provided for those fishermen, when they came weary from their work, for verily those shall be fed who trust in the Lord and do good. It is encouraging to Christ's ministers, whom he hath made fishers of men, that they may depend upon him who employs them to provide for them, and if they should miss of encouragement in this world, should be reduced as Paul was to hunger, and thirst, and fastings often, let them content themselves with what they have here, they have better things in reserve, and shall eat and drink with Christ at his table in his kingdom, L.U. 22.30 A while ago, the disciples had entertained Christ with a broiled fish, L.U. 24.42, and now, as a friend, he returned their kindness, and entertained them with one, nay, in the draft of fishes, he repaid them more than a hundredfold.